Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're all doing very, very well. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. All right, um, before we start, quick shout out to my boy, Rob Tebbit. You guys know Rob, obviously, formerly of Boxing Social. He has now started putting content on his own YouTube channel. He's just done a fantastic sit down interview with Shane McGuigan. So if you haven't subscribed to his channel, please do. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be loads more content coming on his channel. Plus he has um, a few other things in the pipeline as well. He did kind of reveal all to me and I'm sure he's gonna reveal all to you guys very, very soon as well. But very, very excited to see the next step for Rob Tebbit. I've said this for so many years. I think he's the best interviewer in boxing. Like he always pushes the needle, doesn't he? Every time you think you're safe, he asks one more question. Um, so it's good to see him back doing what he loves to do. And yeah, look, if you don't know his channel, the link will be in the description, but it is just Rob Tebbit. Um, but yeah, I'll put the link in the description anyway. All right, let's talk about Baturbiev destroying Joe Smith, destroying him to unify the WBO, WBC and IBF titles. Obviously the WBA belt is held by Dimitri Bivol. We'll get on to whether or not that fight should happen next. Uh, very, very shortly. I knew from the weigh-in, and I wish I did a video about this. I need to do more weigh-in videos. I need to get a lot more serious on this fucking channel. But I knew from the weigh-in, Joe Smith was effed. From the weigh-in, from the stare-down. And I don't really read too much into stare -down. You know, people say, oh, I looked into his eyes and I can see he wasn't. But Joe Smith, for the first sort of five, six seconds of the stare-down, you know, it was game. And then he put his hand out to shake. And Baturbev looked at it like, what are you doing? But Baturbev, to be fair, shook his hand. But Baturbev almost gave him the look of, I'm here to kill you and you're here to shake hands. It was almost a look of disgust. And at that moment, I knew Joe Smith was fucked. That was the, look, even going into the fight, I, I knew, or I, I expected Baturbev to knock Joe Smith out. But I knew from that moment, it was going to be an early, early lights out. And that's what it was, early lights out. Um, the idea of trying to run forward and go, Toe to toe with Baturbiev might be the silliest thing you can do in boxing. There's some fighters that you just don't run to like that. You know, there's there's a reason most people talk about the first couple of rounds as just feel out rounds. Like if you can survive them, survive them, but they're feel out rounds, you start to gauge your distance, you know, you start to, you know, look at openings and then sort of rounds three onwards, you start to kind of really put your game plan together. Joe Smith was like, no, 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 no. I've just got to go and do something silly. And by doing something silly, he got stopped. He got stopped. Don't get me wrong. He would have been stopped anyway, but he got stopped a lot earlier because I feel like the boogeyman that Baturbiev is makes you kind of go against your game plan. I don't know if it's fear. I don't know what it is, but Joe Smith didn't box. And look, Joe Smith will probably sit down and say this after. I haven't seen any interviews after. I'm filming this at 6.30 in the morning. I haven't seen any interviews, but I'm sure he's going to say, yeah, we know we didn't stick to the game plan. We should have done this. We should have done that. Sometimes it's the box on the opposite corner that forces you out of your game plan. And um, yeah, Baturbiev is just one scary, dangerous individual. Um, I did my um, DAZN boxing pound for pound top 10 with Tony Bellew. And I had him at number nine or 10. And a lot of people don't have him in their top 10s. Probably will now. But I just know this guy is incredible. Honestly, I, yes, he can be hurt. And, and I get all that but he can hurt you more. <laughs> it reminds me of the old Newcastle side under Kevin Keegan. I don't know if you guys um, are old enough or you follow football where, you know, you'll score three, they'll score four. You'll score four, they'll score five. And, and don't be wrong, sometimes it always doesn't lead to success. They never won the title, but they're exciting. And that's what he is. He's, an, he's exciting. He's destructive. Um, he's 37, but don't let that fool you. If you live the life, and I think we've seen this with athletes now um, in various sports. LeBron James is, what, 37, I think. Look at him. Fantastic condition. Ronaldo, fantastic. If you live the life, um, then you'll be okay. And I think he lives the life. And plus, he's only had, what, 18 fights as a pro. Yes, big amateur background, but only 18 fights as a pro. 18 of those have not gone the distance. 18 fights, 18 knockouts. And you, you normally get those kind of records early on in your career. Look at someone like Belanga. You get those records. But when you're fighting world caliber, world champions, he's putting these guys to sleep, making them stop, making them quit. Quit? And when I say quit, I don't mean technically, I mean mentally they're, they're quitting. Then, yeah. 
he's, he's, a, he's, he's a dangerous, dangerous man. I mean, there's a lot of talk about Anthony Yard next. Obviously, Anthony Yard and Tunde Ajayi were ringside. And I think Bob Aram released a statement saying that if but to be of wins, it will be Yard next. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will. Like, if you're... Look, Yard's a fighter. So Yard will still want the fight. Yard isn't going to watch that like us mere human beings and say, mm, don't fancy it. Yard will still fancy it. But it's not... Someone's got to save Yard from himself. And that obviously will probably be Tunde or, or Frank saying... Not yet. They would have watched that fight hoping to see a slug match. Almost a bit, hoping to see a bit of Bertabia versus Marcus Brown. So you look at it and think, OK, Bertabia won, but you know what? Maybe Joe Smith took a bit from him. Joe Smith didn't take anything from him. So you're watching that thinking, not yet. Not yet. No. So hopefully what that's done, this performance now, has almost pushed the Boatsy yard fight a bit closer. Because you surely you weigh it up and you think, OK, and, and look, the risk reward with Baturbev is a good one because the, the risk is, you know, you, you get beat and, you know, you, you might get hurt. But the reward is you become a unified light heavyweight champion and thus the number one level light heavyweight on the planet. You, you do. You take those belts. You are that guy. Um, I just feel like the financial reward and I stand to be corrected on this, guys. You can shoot me down if you want. I feel like the financial reward with a fight with Boatsy in London, O2 Arena, sold out, it might just be a bit bigger. It is, is, it, is, is it the reward of becoming a light heavyweight champion? No, but sometimes you might have to admit to yourself, you might not be on that level yet. And it's the same with Boatsy. Like, ideally, Boatsy beats Craig Richards and jumps in with Bivol. Sometimes, though, you've got to say, is Boatsy ready for that? I think Virgil Hunter said he isn't. And I think someone's got to tell Yard, someone's got to have a word with Tunde. And look, Tunde's a smart guy. You're not ready for that yet. You're not ready for that yet. That this guy Berterbiev is a machine. You're not. You don't go. You don't go from Lyndon Arthur to Berterbiev. You don't do that. Like there has to be something in between that. You, you can't go from that. And let's be honest. Lyndon Arthur was only a get back because you lost when everyone expected you to win. But you can't go from Lyndon Arthur to the number one light heavy on the planet, the boogeyman, pound for pound top ten. I don't think you can do it. I don't rule out Yard's chances. Yard can crack. We know that. But they all can crack. Vosdick could hit. Joe Smith could hit. Marcus Brown ain't no slouch. They all can hit. This guy absorbs it and keeps on coming. He breaks your soul. You're not ready for that yet. You're just not. It's not. Not, not being... This isn't an anti-Anthony Yard video. I fucking love Anthony Yard. Trust me, I love him. I mean, the... the as much as I dig him, some I dig him for his inactivity. I definitely don't dig him for his boxing a bit. I love him, but this guy here, no. That a lot of people, a lot of people were saying this is going to go late. Him, Joe Smith was going to go late, and you know, Bertrand Bert might have to get up off the canvas. All those talk, he's ran through him like a hot knife through butter. Nah, man, nah. Boogeyman, honestly, boogeyman. He would have buried Canelo. And I'm, I'm saying that, and I'm not saying that with a bit of exaggeration, a bit of hyperbole. He would have buried Canelo. I'm telling you now, this guy is, is massive. And you know, the funny thing is, with a lot of these sort of big punches like this, you almost forget how good of a boxer they are. Like Golovkin got this as well. I remember me and Ryan arguing once about um, uh, Golovkin versus David Lemieux. And I was like, dude, 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 you do know that Golovkin's amateur record is incredible. If he wants to start boxing again, he'll start boxing, but it's become so easy for him to knock you out, he goes that avenue. But Terbia can box. He can box as well. He's not just a power puncher. So you, you almost have to look at it. When you, when you do factor up the yard thing, if we're being brutally honest, he's a better boxer than Anti Yard, and he can hit as hard, and he is right now the unified light heavyweight champion of the world. It's, it's too big a ask for me. It's too big an ask. I thought Yard Kovalev was a big ask. And look, Yard, to, to an extent, showed us that he was at that level because he really he nearly got rid of Kovalev. This is higher than that. This is higher than that. So for me, if I'm Yard, if I'm Team Yard, I, I look at the Boatsy fight and I go back to Eddie and say, OK, what's the offer? And you weigh it up. What's the offer? It's, it's what? It's a million. What, what is it? 1.5? What is it? Whatever the offer is, you look at that and think, OK, we can do that. And then the winner of that then the winner of that, I don't think anyone would then begrudge the winner of that for saying, OK, we want the world title. What it should be right now is Bivol versus Baturbiev. 
That's what it should be right now. It should be that, an undisputed fight. Nothing should get in the way of that. And the fact that Bivol, sorry, the fact that Baturbev has literally come through unscathed in that fight. I mean, did he even take a punch? It's, he's perfect. He's ready. You know, have a little break because camps are really difficult, but they're ready to go. Bivol should not be looking at anyone else. There's been a lot of talk about Bivol and other opponents. It should be Bivol versus Paterbiev to decide who is the best 175 pounder on the planet. And both of them are coming off fantastic wins. One, one's coming off Canelo, one's coming off Joe Smith. It's fantastic. Do it. Everyone else should step aside. That's what I think. Uh, let's quickly uh, move on. Uh, Rabisi Ramirez uh, got the win over Abraham Nova, stopped him in the fifth. Um, I don't know if you guys know too much about Rabisi Ramirez, um, double Olympic gold medalist, double Olympic gold medalist, 2012 and 2016. Uh, top rank signed him and he lost in his first fight. <laughs> Imagine that. A double Olympic gold medalist, you're like, oh, you think you've got another one, right? I mean, Bob Aaron probably thinks we've got another Loma. And then he lost in his first fight. But since then, he has, uh, I think, won nine straight. Um, and he actually had a rematch of the guy who beat him and beat him. So he's kind of okay now, right? And now they're trying to push him. They're trying to push him. Um, he's quite highly ranked with the WBO, uh, 130 pounds. So we'll see what he can do. Um, sorry, 100, 126 pounds. Apologies, 126 pounds. So we'll see what he can do. Um, I wonder, I feel like he's a, um, the risk reward for him maybe having those fights against your Josh Warrington's who, who he'll probably beat Josh Warrington if I'm being sincerely honest your Josh Warrington your Lee Wood your Michael Collins I wonder if those guys even look at him and think there's just no point there's no point he's very very skilled and it's not like it's a big financial fight especially for Warrington and Lee Wood at their stage of their careers is it worth it I'm not quite sure so we'll see what happens with him but clearly a very very good boxer they don't give out Olympic gold medals for fun, double Olympic gold medalist, Pan American Games gold medalist, Cuban, yeah, if you didn't know that already. So yeah, dangerous, dangerous guy. Um, should we have a quick look? This is interesting. And um, now this hasn't been confirmed or hasn't been denied, but there was um, someone on Twitter that um, or I think uh, an Irish reporter that said Tyson Fury was refused entry into the US due to the links with Daniel Kinahan. Um, now, there was this massive um, thing put out about a month ago saying that there was over 500 people that are on this list of people associated with Daniel Kinahan that wouldn't be allowed into the US. Um, I never thought Tyson Fury wouldn't be allowed in. But yeah, Tyson Fury refused entry, which is um, which is interesting. Um, and and I, I guess for Tyson Fury... I guess it raises bigger problems. Now, if Ty look, Tyson Fury said he's retired, but you know there was this talk about an Ngano kind of crossover match. Obviously, that would have happened in America. I, I, I guess the only benefit now for Tyson Fury is that of all the fights he should and can still have, they'll be either UK based or based in the Middle East. So Usyk, AJ, and even Ngano now. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of big news. It's just almost gone under the radar, like. The heavyweight champion of the world, the lineal heavyweight champion of the world has been refused entry into the US due to his association with Daniel Kinnan. That's, that's big, big news that not many people are talking about. Um, talk about heavyweights. Andrew Ruiz versus Luis Ortiz is set to take place September the 4th. That one is hopefully signed and sealed. Should be a good fight. Ruiz, I've said what I needed to say about Ruiz on Twitter the other day. One fight in 30 months. That one fight was Chris Ariola and he didn't look great in that fight. He's had injuries. I don't know what's going on with Ruiz. But there is such a good fighter in there. Such a good fighter. Um, Luis Ortiz is coming off that win against Charles Martin in January, I think it was. It was on pay-per-view pay in America, I think. Um, we'll see. I like that. In, in terms of styles, good fight. And Luis Ortiz, I mean, I think we've seen that there still is something there. I mean, if you go off that win against Charles Martin, who was on his own little ascendancy, then it's not a bad fight at all. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Um, let's just hope it can get made because there's been a lot of sort of false dawns when it comes to Andy Ruiz and fights being made or announced and we don't really hear much. So let, let's see and hope it can be done. Um, what else is there to talk about? Um, I did see, I saw the other day that they've um, put Joe Joyce, it's a, it's a bit of a last minute dot com thing, but Joe Joyce has been added to um, uh, Queensbury fight card and he's fighting Christian Hamer. Obviously, look, it was supposed to be 
Joseph Parker, so much has gone on behind the scenes as to why that fight's not happening. But yeah, um, Christian Hamer. I mean, maybe as a lastminute.com thing, there aren't that many better lastminute.com opponents, but I don't know, man. Joe Joyce 37 in September. That's, you know, he's got to get a move on. He's got to get a move on. I, I don't know what he can do, if I'm honest with you. Because now there seems to be this jam that's like a, there's a jam in the heavyweight division right now. There's obviously, the, the, we don't know what's going on with Fury. Like, and, and this is why it's a quite annoying. Like, if Fury has retired, he's come out and said, I'm retired. He's come out now and said it a hundred times. Then vacate your belt. Vacate your belt so others can fight for it. Like, I would love to see uh, Deontay Wilder versus Joe Joyce. I'd love to see that. They, you can't just, you can't do this, basically. You can't win a title. Say I'm retired, now I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep hold of the title. You can't do that. If you've retired and you've won your belt, then retire. The boxer moves on. It does, I mean, I've been watching this sport for years and every time you think, oh, you know, you're begging for someone to come. I remember for years begging Nassim Hamid to come out of retirement. Nassim Hamid retired at 29, like, please Nassim, one more fight. You move on. If Tyson Fury is retired, then go, so others can fight for your belts. One of those being Joe Joyce. Let Joe Joyce have a crack at it, man. Bloody hell, who wouldn't want to see Joe Joyce Deontay Wilder? Crazy. Um, this is news that and I might do a separate video on this because it's quite annoying if I'm honest with you. Uh, Cambosos Haney will get it on again. Um, Haney has just said here, um, if it's in Australia, I feel like I did it once, I can do it again. He, he's going to have no fear in going to Australia. And to be fair, look, he got quite a good reception from Australians. You're going to get some booze, obviously. You're going to get something said at you because you're fighting. You're in a way fighter going into... Um, Cambosis' territory, Cambosis' backyard, you're gonna get some of that. But ultimately, I think the fans were quite respectful. Um, look, it's not a fight we wanna see, but credit to Cambosis, he's not like, just, you know, it's not like he's, remember that's his first defeat, and mentally, I think he's showing that he's got the minerals to come back from it, like he's in the gym, he's saying all the right things, he's not shying away. Like, I always think of someone like, um, and look, everyone deals with defeats and, and difficulties in their life differently, but I remember when Ronda Rousey got smashed by Holly Holm. She motherfucker disappeared off planet Earth. Didn't say anything, didn't do any post-fight interviews, vanished. Um, and I feel like that doesn't help. Whereas, again, Cambosos, you know, he went into the changing room of, of Devin Haney after and was like, you know, you had your time, congratulations. Um, rematch. <laughs> and it's the, financially, you know, boxing's all about belts and money. He's had his time as a belt holder. Now it's about getting that money, getting more of it. And obviously the Haney rematch will give him some good money. So good luck to him. Um, uh, Virgil Hunter on Joshua Boatze, he's the second best fighter I've had behind Andre Ward. Okay, cool, that's good, that's a big statement. Um, you know, for some reason, I don't know why, I've just been seeing a lot of clips of Andre Ward recently. Like, I watched uh, Andre Ward Kovalev won the other day. Kovalev won that fight by a round, close fight, close fight, but I, I gave it to, um, no, what did I score that fight again? Because there was a knockdown, I need to score it properly, but for me, Kovalev won the fight. Um, the second fight, obviously, Ward won, um, stopped Kovalev in the eighth round. But then I saw a picture of Andre Ward and James Tony, and it looks like they're going at each other. It looks like Tony, and a lot of people were asking who wins that fight, James Tony. James Tony, I don't know how old you guys are watching this, but James Tony was fucking incredible. Ward was very good. I mean, look, Ward, Olympic gold, Olympic Games gold medalist, won the Super Six, two-weight world champion, incredible. But James Tony, James lights out Tony. Different. Different. Um, if you don't know, now you know. Um, a bit here, Aram expects Baturbi of Smith winner to fight Anthony Yard next. I'm telling you now, that ain't happening next. I'm telling you now, that ain't happening next. Um, it, I saw this, okay. Um, Ortiz Mickinson has been um, rescheduled. What date? August 6th? August 6th. Um, that's quite good for Mickinson that he gets the opportunity. Obviously, everyone expected it to be Ortiz versus Avenician. There is some big news coming for Avenician soon. Um, a lot of people are upset that Avenician is somehow ducking Ortiz. It's got some big news coming for Avenician, trust me. Um, anything else before we pack up? 
Um, Danny Garcia embracing a fight with Arislandi Lara at 155 pound catchweight. So, one second. I just need to see something about Danny Garcia. I know his last fight was against Errol Spence. I just wanna, I just wanna check the date of that fight. So he's not fought since the, what's that? The 5th of December, 2020. Man, he's an inactive now. Just inactive fighter. Yeah, it's just, it's just how it happens, isn't it? Once you get to this level for some reason, these guys just slow right down. Um, it's weird because you think of Danny Garcia at 140 pounds was considered a power punch. I got to 147, not that guy anymore. Uh, 155? Yeah, it's not going to be. It's not going to be good for him. Um, if there's still something left in Lara, and I think we saw that there is, it, but he moved up to 160. Lara could take him out. Not sorry, not take him out. Beat him. Sorry. Um, all right, cool. All right, guys, girls, we are done. Peace and love.